Welcome to Inside the 18. I'm Michael Majid, live from Hollywood, California. With me, you know her as the number one fan of USA soccer, the one and only 99 World <laughs> Cup winner, Suskio Weber, sporting her USA hat. Actually, that's a hockey hat, isn't it? Is that Team USA hockey that you're wearing uh, right now? It was Team USA across the board for the Olympics. But I oh, okay. last time I wore it was when hockey was playing in the gold medal. That's that's yeah. what's going on. And speaking to somebody who's got a little bit of a uh, of experience uh, with the uh, the USA soccer uh, setup because she's uh, already had her chance uh, over in the U.S. Women's National Team pool. We've got Portland Thorns goalkeeper Bella Bigsby making her triumphant return to inside the 18 post pandemic. What's up, Bella? What? Yeah, it's been <laughs> a while, but <laughs> post pandemic. I don't know if it's post pandemic yet, but okay. yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. That's a very, very good point. Yeah, you of all people should know so that. Here, two, two years, two years. <laughs> it's been two years. It's been two years. Oh, hold on, Hector. Hector Castro says, let's go. So you got a big fan right here already. Uh, well, uh, Bella, obviously it has been two years since you've been on the show. Uh, before we kind of get started in today's topic, which is going to be talking about extending reach, um, obviously a lot's uh, it's happened, uh, not just uh, you know in your own world, but in the world in general. And first off, Shout out to you and some of the other players out there who uh, speak their mind out there. Uh, anybody who is opinionated and uh, and willing to uh, be honest uh, out there is uh, number one in Suskia's heart because, Suskia, Absolutely. I know you're pretty opinionated yourself, too. I think I've gotten better. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I am very opinionated. But that's a but that's a good thing. So, so Bella, why don't you catch up everybody a little bit and what's been going on in your world? Obviously, um, you know, Portland Thorns, you know, you guys had a great run last year and, uh, you know, you recovered from this injury, which is obviously a really difficult injury. And, uh, and what else? What else? Um, yeah, I think kind of an unsatisfying end to our season last year um, with how well we were doing. We obviously won the Shield, which is incredibly difficult to do. Um, but we posted, I think, a new club record for shutouts in a season. Like We did very well, but I think we were unsatisfied with how that sort of ended. So. Um, a lot of changes within our team, a lot of changes within our front office, technical staff. So obviously just um, still feeling things out very early in the season, but we have a good group. Um, well, I think, yeah, I've got and, and been lucky to have been called into two national team camps since November, um, which has been really cool, really exciting. Um, and it was awesome to get into that environment. I think it's obviously next step up from club um and it was just a great environment to like push myself and, and learn anything so yeah I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool, you know, when, when you talk about all that, obviously, because, you know, Suski and I, we were talking about this earlier, Suski, that the difference, been, and obviously shout out, you know, to San Diego, you know, being uh, one of the expansion teams to be currently in the position that they're at. But there's the separation between the top of the table right now, Suski, and the bottom of the table is like three points. I mean, everything is so tight in the NWSL right now. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think that, you know, it goes to what we were talking about earlier is it, it really, you know, is a nod to the depth of women's soccer here in the United States that, you know, two expansion teams can come in and go to the top of the charts, but also it's just three points. Like there's, it's so close. Like every weekend it, it can flip around. Um, and just the quality that's out there and being played is, is off the charts. Yeah. And by the way, Bella, feel free to step in any time with any of your opinions. We love your opinions. Yeah, I was waiting for an opinion cool. about, the, about the Angel City. Game I almost said something. I like, that, that, yeah, that is bold of you with the game I'm playing tomorrow. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't even Thanks. think about it. And I was just like, oh, I didn't even think of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I swear. And then I was sitting here and I was like, I can not it. it. I, I do. I am an owner. So I'm like, <laughs> but it's Fine. all good. It's all good Fair news. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the game is the game is at home for you all. Yeah. So uh so you guys have that ridiculous home field advantage up there. Uh but try I, to keep I it really, neutral. I really looked in my background, I was like, ooh, I could flip the scarf and put the USA mm -hmm. soccer one up there, but I, I just gotta stick with it at this point. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> all good bella, all good you know w actually you know one one crazy thing uh, bella which i think a lot of people aren't aren't familiar with about you is that you're you're oregon through and through i mean you've pretty much outside of the loan spells you've pretty much you know spent your entire career playing up in oregon yeah 
I'm an Oregon kid through and through. Um, that's why I felt like it was so important for me to go on loan because I grew up playing club soccer here, obviously. Oregon ODP, went to school at Oregon State. Um, it was really uh, important that I left, not just the state, but just got experience being out of market of my family um, and trying to like push myself by myself away from my normal resources. So yeah, big Oregon kid, um, still live very close to where I grew up, um, but those loan opportunities were huge for me to like step out of my comfort zone. I, <laughs> what'd, I, you, I, what'd you do? Did you just <laughs> remove it? Did you just take off the camera and remove it? <laughs> I did. I, <laughs> I have to be. I have to be neutral here. I was like, oh. So. <laughs> I love. I, I love that. Now, 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 you've just got like Herman Trophy awards behind you, and like you know, Olympic golds, and you know, World Cup trophies, all that sort sorts of things. You know, those are fine. You can have those. Uh, you know, Bel <laughs> Bella somehow is endorsing. Uh, it looks like body armor to the right hand side, uh, accidentally. <laughs> I got Coca-Cola. Coca yeah. <laughs> I got Pepsi Nitro going. Oh, look at that. No, nah, you can do that. Did somebody just turn it off? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Bella, I do want to ask you though, what was it like in Israel? Because that's an experience that I didn't know. Um, you know, I don't know a lot about the women's game in Israel. I know there we have a fan out there who coaches the women's game in Israel, but I don't know much about the league. Sure. Um, yeah, it was a very different experience compared to my loan in Frankfurt. Um, obviously not as Western, so customs different, culture cultures different compared to the United States, and then also the cultures within Israel of different groups, different demographics. Um, it was really different. Um, it, I felt like I took a lot of big steps and like getting around on my own. I didn't have a car. Um, my sister actually oddly lived in Jerusalem temporarily when I was in Tel Aviv. Oh, nice. so I was Wait, was that ran was that completely random? Yeah, her my brother in law was getting his PhD and it was part of his PhD program was to go to Jerusalem and I then got a call. There was an opportunity in Tel Aviv, so that was obviously very coincidental. But um yeah, I it's a very like hardworking like Israel I would say Israeli players are really hardworking, um, really feisty, um, and have a lot of character. And so that was really fun. It's definitely different than American soccer. I felt like I was able to get a lot of action and goal and also felt like I was given a little bit of liberty to try new things and get out of my comfort zone. And I think that really helped me step into some new confidence when I came back to the state. Don't they all have to go into the military? Yeah. So a lot of my, my best friend on the team, uh, she was, yes, yeah, they all have to go into the military in different, in some way, shape or form, um, <laughs> which is wild, but yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Talk about hard working. I know. I was. I was just gonna say, like, how, how that's always interesting. They're like, where, where, where was, where was, where was my backup keeper? They're like, well, she, uh, she's on she's assignment on, right now. She's on deploy. She's deployed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my, a lot of my teammates were still um, serving their time. Wow. On the side, like part time. Yeah, in the military. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, let's. Uh, this is this is a weird segue, but let's uh, let's get into this today's topic, guys. Segways <laughs> are weird, yeah. Segways are always weird. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Segways are always weird, but uh, today's you nail topic. Them. Sometimes I nail them and sometimes I don't. Sometimes. Oh my god! You know, do you see who that? Do you I see, see. I see. I see you're sneaking. Come back, you little. <laughs> then get out. Come. She's she's trying to be a little troublemaker. She has she has literally no business thing in this room. <laughs> Where are you right now? Are you in the locker room? Locker room. I'm in uh I'm in a the like visitors locker room to try to get some quiet. Yeah, some oh. quiet. Oh from well. from that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, that's over at Suskia's house. That is uh, that's they decide they always want to do work literally during the podcast. That's when they decide to do all sorts and of. And it construction. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I can schedule a podcast at nine in the morning, and the gardeners will happen to show up that morning. Something will happen. <laughs> yeah. So. All Sorry. right. Let's get into today's topic. Today's topic, guys, is extending reach. One of the reasons we wanted to have Bella on. Uh, is because you're really, really good at this. You're really good at staying disciplined and kind of waiting until the final moment to actually make your action to get the most reach out of the space that you can. Um, Bella, for some parents out there who are listening who don't know what we mean by this, what do we mean by like extending your reach or range? Um, to me, that to me, I'm thinking of uh, positioning 
to give yourself the best sort of chance, um, for lack of a better word, to get to all kinds of services. Um, and you're not gambling. Um, and so when I think of extending your reach, maximizing your reach, it means that you're disciplined in your learning, um, whether that's left or right control or depth off your line. Um, that has a huge influence on what you can and can't get to. Um, and I think that that's something that I've put most of my energy into in the last 18 months has been really like keying in my positioning, even if it's a few inches, I'm going over film. We are that nitpicky about it. Um, trying to really dial it in so that it, we use like a joystick analogy where it's like anytime the ball is moving or if the picture changes, the joystick changes and I'm obviously controlled by the joystick. And it's just these tiny movements so that I have the best chance of having, like using the most of my reach and my range. So let's get, all I can think of right now is playing FIFA with Bella Bigsby is right now all I can think of with the, with the joystick analogy yeah. going on. Okay. Anything you want to add on to that? No, I'm waiting for this drilling to stop behind <laughs> me. Um, um, no, I agree 100%. Like positioning is key for you to get the right movement and everything. And really like the energy that moves through your body, if you're set, you're positioning, you know, you can cover more space, have more range and more, be more explosive um, to extend that reach. I mean, I think I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people when they when they think of extending reach, Bella, like they go like, oh, well, it's so easy for her. She's like six feet tall and she's got long arms and yada, yada, yada. But I, I don't think a lot of people recognize the fact that, like, just because you have certain physical traits doesn't mean that I'm sure you've seen keepers with very, you know, long traits who can't cover space as, as well as you. Um, yeah, I think so. What I'll say about that is that um, being tall, I had a lot of natural um, range, so to speak. But, you know, when I reached the pro level, I wasn't really tapping into my full potential. I, I, I couldn't just be content being tall and being able to get to some things just because of a little, you know, some extra inches in my wingspan. Um, I was actually very much in a deficit for low balls, the balls that are hitting the corners and side netting that are low were very difficult for me because of how tall I was. Um, and I think that that gets, you know, I do hear that a lot. Well, you're tall, you're naturally gifted at these things. I, I feel like I actually had to undo a lot about a lot of bad habits that I developed from relying on being tall for so long, my whole life. I had to undo a lot of those habits, um, break those down and then build up different habits so that I could, I feel like I have extended my reach for those balls that are on the ground, um, a lot of tall goalkeepers, myself included, it's a bad habit I'll come back to. My step position gets much too wide, meaning my feet go outside my hip. And so that when I have to try to sink to go to a low ball, I'll do a leg sweep. And that's a really, really typical of tall goalkeepers. Um, we have such long bodies, so we have to figure out how to use them. And it's actually for me, ironically, has been getting my step position narrower, loading through my hips, hinging at my hip, getting my butt low to the ground, and then being able to push. I've been able to utilize my length for lower balls, whereas before I was too wide and I was doing the leg sweep in order to get down quickly enough. Um, so height is a great advantage when you're young. <laughs> um, but then if you develop these bad habits that go with it, um, I, think it can, I, I think it can hurt you in some aspects of your game later on. Suske, go ahead. What were you about to say, Sus? Oh no! I was gonna say with that wide stance, and you see it. Are you seeing Coco behind me? With that yeah. wide, <laughs> with that wide stance, um, when you get that, there, it's very hard to get any sort of power explosiveness through a lateral lateral movement, and so and and even and then depending on a leg sweep, then you're getting no explosiveness, mm -hmm. which is why you find tall goalkeepers getting beat low, like into the side corners and everything. So narrowing that stance, and I find that a lot as well, like with young keepers coming up that do a, either it's a double set with a first they set right, then they do a du double set and they're too wide and they just can't cover or get that, extend their range at all. So it's really what you said is just so imperative. It's, it's having that right position for your feet, for your set position and everything. So you can utilize and get the most energy behind your, your dot. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, one of the things that I love Bella that you were saying right there in regards to like having to understand your own physical your own physical body, your own physical traits and everything like that and recognize, you know, how th certain things might be beneficial. Some things might be a detriment. And how do you 
you know, kind of negate these these kind of weaknesses, you know, with certain areas or whatever. Like, you know, um, one thing I've noticed, and, and I don't know if this is something you've noticed with a lot of tall young goalkeepers, is that they lock so much that they actually lose range because they just they get so used to when they're younger of just reaching out and locking out, and that's just enough. And then once they get to the higher levels, the pace of the game is too fast that they're behind the play by then. I remember having that issue. And the way that it was fixed for me was luckily a bit earlier on than the pro level was my hand position. Um, when I was younger, my hands were off my body quite a bit. Um, and so when those balls would come kind of just past my bubble, because my hands were out, I would instinctively lead with my hand. And most of the time I'd get there, but I wouldn't have any connection with the rest of my body. Um, so relying on that height, right? Like my arms, my arm can get there. Um, but I can't, I'm not using any power or any kind of step. And so fixing my hand position, uh, actually helps me kind of get out of that lock that you just, that you talked about. And so that I have to now trace it with both hands and then naturally more of a step came. I was able to like those ones that are coming right on the fringe of your bubble. Um, I felt like I was getting locked less. Yeah, I think you you find like um, keepers that do that. Like I always use an analogy. I'm like, it's like this anchor that you're leaving hanging over here, trying to dive here if your hands are too wide, and here is this, and it's like this like anchor towing in the water. You're getting no energy um, yeah. to get to that ball whatsoever. So by going with two hands to the ball, have your hands tighter, two hands to the ball, all that energy is coming from your entire core, and now you have more power behind the ball because if you go and you lock at a higher level, the pace of the ball is going to blow right through your hand. Oh, yeah. um, and you're not going to get either whether it's a good parry. And, like, you still go two hands and you can end up with one. So you can yeah. go and then a final reach. But that power, you're hitting the ball, and, and so it can either you can hold on to it or you can get a good parry out, out of the box or out to the corner flag or wherever it is. But if you go and you just extend, the pace of the ball at the level you're at and at high levels, it's just going to blow through your hand. Absolutely. But, but I also think, you know, Bella, like one of the things is in regards to like tracking. I think like a, a lot of young goalkeepers, you know, once they lock and they extend, as you start getting to the higher levels, the ball moves more. And yeah. once you once you commit, once you lock, let's say it's a back to the bar type situation. Once you lock with your arm up there, I'm never up there because I'm 5'8". But you know what I mean, like my arm is up there. Um, and the ball starts moving, well now there's even if you try to drop drive back by then it's too late i have this photo this picture image in my head right now of mike with his arm extended running around <laughs> trying to chase a ball <laughs> so like, well you see that you see that with uh <laughs> you see that with corner kicks as well if you commit too early mm -hmm. like you, you lack some of the momentum you gain from like holding your hands um but yeah you're right like as that ball is moving more there's more spin there's more texture on it um I found that as I started to find my explosiveness in like my second year of my season here, um, I was getting, my hands were getting there, but I'm, I was extending to, I was throwing them too early. And then the ball would kind of just sort of hit it like a wall instead of finding the ball and reading the spin. And um, yeah, I think locking out too early causes a lot of problems in a lot of different areas. You want to meet energy with energy. Yeah, Newton's theory. Newton, Newton's theory, right? You yeah. don't want to put a wall up, and if, if, if you shoot something at a wall, it's going to blow through it. But if you hit a moving target with a moving target, it'll redirect it, and it's also, it's easier to control. Yeah. I was just going to say, Suske, that, when Rutgers, I do that. that Rutgers <laughs> education playing in right there. Right there, we got New Newton's theory coming to play in goalkeeping. I'm sure there's, there's a lot of that going on. Um, I want to talk about flexibility with you, Bella, because is, is, is this something that, I mean, I, I, I notice a lot of the saves in regards to making, when you're talking about getting low to the ground now and being able to use your limbs efficiently now, it seems like, have you been doing a lot of like, Pilates or flexibility work in, in the off season? <laughs> I love the fact. Um, I was not judgmental against Pilates. I just don't have the discipline for that. Um, so I... It's, it's such an L.A. question. I just started like an image came to my head of me doing it, Pilates in the off season. It's, I was like, it's I such, it's, should. It's, it's, such, it's such a bougie but no. question. Are you in your um, Pilates class? <laughs> listen, I got to get into my Lululemon right now as we speak. So. Um, so what comes to mind was how I essentially dropped into a some splits against the spirit on um, a 1D1 I had against Trinity Rodman. 
I felt like that was a little showcase of the flexibility I've been working on. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I work on, especially, especially for 1v1, I feel like a lot of hip mobility and a lot of hamstring mobility. I, that's something I'm doing before practice each day to increase so that I'm, when I'm getting into those positions at full speed, I'm not going to injure myself. Um, lucky for me, I did hurdles in high school. And so oh, nice. a long leg, a long leg, but save for me is a lot like how I looked going over a hurdle and how I stretched for hurdles. Um, but yeah, I'd say flexibility. I ain't, like we do a lot of explosive work with Nadine and here in Portland to do the goalkeeping. So a lot of the times we'll start on our knees and it becomes a sequence of one knee up, the next knee up. And so being able to push out of, of push out of, sorry, push out of a position where we have a lot of knee flexion, being able to activate those glutes in uncomfortable positions is key to like tapping into the most power that we have. So flexibility has been, that's something I've been focusing on a lot, especially as I've gotten older, um, not like a spry, spry 18 year old anymore. So flexibility <laughs> oh, has been God. like an, impl <laughs> I'm still young, but like, I definitely have to like, I'm starting to like, feel like I have to change my prehab and my rehab a little bit compared to when I started playing professionally. <laughs> I get that question. I want to. I want to answer that that comment that came up really quick. Um, you, who was that from? The ten year old. It was from Hector. From Hector. Hector. So Hector, if you're finding that he's doing a lot, he's kick save happy, which is it's it's a bad habit that's going around. A lot of that is coming. You have to watch his set position and if he's flat footed or on, or on his heels for his height as well, because if his if his if he's not weight forward and stuff like that, it's it's an easy, I'm just going to kick out my foot and kick save. So you have to look at that as well. It might not just be the fact that he's he's taller. It might also be that he's um, not setting properly. But, but I, I, you know, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, no, if, go. he's ten, if he's 10 years old, I would be willing to bet that the pace at that age isn't uh, fast enough yet that he has to be foot saving. Yeah, I agree. Um, and so at that age, I remember I went through a phase where I was getting foot save happy, as you say. Um, and it had a lot to do with the fact that I was set on my heels or set too wide. My weight's back, and now it's just easier to release and, and kick save instead of dropping my butt, hinging my hips, and leading with my hands for a low ball. Um, he's probably having success with it, and it's being reinforced. So I, like Saskia uh, said, I, I think it's probably related to your sunset position, being too backwards or too wide. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, you know, one thing about that too, I mean, just to play devil's advocate though here, Hector, I think it also, it's also based on the scenario too. And based on, based on the situation, because I don't want anyone out there to think, you know, and Bella, you know, you, you, you brought up the Trinity Rodman save, which was a phenomenal. So we're, we're going to watch that. And, the, and then, then the recovery save after that one too, uh, later on. <laughs> but, uh, but that is a situation where a kick save is necessary because you're extending to cover space. And there's a difference between using your legs effectively because it's the closest area basically to the ball and just making a play on the ball that leads to a rebound in a dangerous space or, or whatever type of a thing. So, so Hector, I think you have to recognize what the scenario is first, as opposed to just telling him, don't kick, save, don't kick, save, don't kick, save. Cause that kind of negative, you know, you know, feedback as well too. Is just going to put a kid in their head. I mean, that's that's just my thinking here. If Keep the ball out of the net. <laughs> no, you're 100 percent right. Like it, it depends on the situation, how the proximity and everything. If that's the if that's if it's a hard shot low and it's the fast, it's the only thing that you're not going to get your hands down. You're not going to be able to cover it, and you can and you the only thing there is your foot. Then that's fine, you know. But if he's just deferring to it for everything, then it's a it's a set position issue. So. Yeah. Bella, I got a question for you because, you know, we've been talking about the technical and, and the tactical in regards to extending reach and everything like that. How much of it, though, especially as you're getting older, especially as the speed of the game changes, is mental in regards to being comfortable to, you know, make expand your bubble and, and saying, you know what, as opposed to, oh, I can't get to that ball. Oh, you know what? I can make a play on that ball. I think it starts with my mindset and training. Um I try in training to hold as much as I can, sometimes to a fault where I should be maybe parrying it. I save, try to save that mindset shift for when I'm warming up in a game. If it's outside my bubble and I decide to parry it 
Um, but in training, I'm always trying to test my boundaries um, to see where I can hold on the ball safely and reliably and consistently. Um, and so, you know, that comes with a coach pushing those boundaries as well um, and trying to identify like, is, is the reach not there because it's the wrong tactical decision? Is it, is the reach not there because it's just poor tact, uh, technical execution? Is it delayed? Is it too slow? And if you, I feel like if you identify the reason why a player's not getting to these, a goalkeeper's not getting to these balls, if you can identify if it's maybe speed, so like switching the program, I now have to put my foot in the ground, lead with my hands. If they're doing it and they're just, it's just behind, then it's working on timing, getting out of the middle quicker. But um, you also have to identify if they're using the correct technique to handle that ball correctly, if that makes sense. I think it's a great point because I, I'm very, this is very part of my training and everything, especially in training and in practice. It's guys, you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone. You have to, you have to see, you know, don't just defer. Okay. I'm always going to just parry this ball or I'm always just, you know, do this. You don't know what you can hold on to unless you start extending your range. And, and you can even break that down to like, how far can you come for crosses? How's your timing and everything? You have to try in, in practice. You can't just always say, well, I'm just going to parry. I'm just going to parry. You never know. First of all, we don't want you. I want you to hold on to the ball. We all know that I, I want everybody to hold on to the ball because I hate rebounds. And so I'm like, so you have to put that effort in. You know, you're never going to get you're never going to get further along. You're never going to extend your range. You're never going to know what you can do if, if you don't make those efforts in training. But but I love, Bella, what you just said right there in regards to that sometimes the player might be actually doing everything, quote unquote, right. It's just a matter of just that they're either maybe athletically a little bit behind, you know, uh, from the speed of play. They just can't move that efficiently quite yet. And then I think a lot of times they get frustrated and they start scrapping what they're doing because they think they're doing it wrong. So how is like a as like a as a coach, as a young coach, how do you you know, get that across to a young player, you know, coming from, you know, somebody like yourself. I think I experienced this a lot in like my first and second year. Um, like I said, I had to undo a lot of habits for how I was getting to low balls. Nadine has a specific technique that we learned that I was finally starting to get the hang of in live play. It's one thing to get it in practice, but once forwards are shooting on you, you tend to go back to your bad habits. Once I was starting to get it in live play and shooting drills, I was really behind. So correct action, really slow. Um, and if I get frustrated, I go back to sweeping my leg. And that's not how we build the patterns up here so that we can do it unconsciously. I think this, like I had to just commit to the fact that I was doing the technique right. It was just slow and see that I was getting faster. I was getting closer. I was getting closer. One day I just started holding these, I was starting to get like the patterns were built in my mind. I wasn't having to think about it. I just became unconscious. And so I think it really is being committed to the process will make the action you're trying to do um, more unconscious. So you're not having to think about it and it just starts executing faster. That was my experience. Um, and so I try to keep my kids committed to the process. You did the right thing. It may have been slow, but you did the right thing. Keep doing the right thing. I, see, I, I love that. And I love that. I love that positive encouragement. I think there needs to be more of that in the, in the youth game. And Suski, I know you agree uh with 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 that that statement uh right there um by the way suski you're on mute right now so i'm assuming that there's still a no still... i I, I was <laughs> unmuted and you keep muting me so. well it's because i hear i keep hearing <laughs> 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 all right stop okay. yeah so don't tell me I'm very loud. Mute. you've been muting me <laughs> i know I, I know i've been i've all been right. muting you by the way bella i was we were uh, i was uh chatting with nadine just briefly a few weeks back and she's like uh, I'm a little busy right now. Like they're 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 out here filming a documentary. I mean, like, like what is, what is that environment like when you have like a superstar goalkeeper coach with like this this fan following and people just coming out and and filming <laughs> filming that uh, type of stuff. That's got to be really. I think it's she really does not act like that's the reality. Uh, she's very relatable and goofy and fun, and so I think I forget. I don't forget, but like sometimes I'm like, why do they want to see her? <laughs> that sounds really bad she's just she's not like she's I'm like oh my god um she like yeah 
her career was incredible. She's incredible. I just, she's so like down to earth and relatable and real that it's easy to forget that. <laughs> well, uh, you know, what's not easy to forget some of the saves that you've made recently. So uh, I want to break down some of these plays right here. Oh. Good segue. <laughs> you see that? I make, I can make it happen. I can yeah. make it happen when I want. Okay, so let's see here. Let's pop this up right here. Uh, I want to start with this play right over here. Uh, this is, I believe, I believe this is against, uh, this is, uh, let's see here. What's, is this against Portland? This is against Washington, right? Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, so I think the ball is played. Where is this? Corner um, kick. Yes, it's a corner kick. It's Sam Staub, right? She gets a, a little flick on the ball. It's kind of plays, bumps out towards, like a little bit towards the 18. Half volley by... Ashley is it Ashley Sanchez. It is right. I'll look at that play right there. Let's uh, let's let's play that one more time. I just want to start it from the very beginning. And why don't you break it down for us, Bella, what's happening here from the from the corner kick. First off with the positioning here. Sure. Normal starting positioning for an in swinger. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Balls played in in swinger. Yep. Can't get stop. Gets so a touch. Yeah. So as that as that ball is coming off Stobb's head and kind of getting ready for a second phase, my cue right there is that I have to be ready for a shot at any point because I can't really see. I have a lot in my way. Um, so my cue there is to drop to my goal line so that I can't get looped. Um, and so very like a lot of credit to Ashley Sanchez here. She's not really facing the goal, but I've given myself the best chance to get to any shot she has because I'm in the correct position i'm not in the goal but on my goal line my set position looks good i'm balanced um and so when this loops i go to tip it and because it has some bend on it i have to start reaching continuing to follow it because it's starting to bend away and so it kind of twists my body and it looks a little crazy it goes from one being maybe just a tip over the bar to me having to leave the ground because like we talked about that texture comes in and I realize I'm going to have to twist a little bit to push that over. But um, See, I think this the is, biggest – go go ahead. This is a perfect example of what we were talking about, about getting that energy up through your body, going with two hands, ending up tipping with one, um, and and ha that energy pulled you off the ground. Like that, that helped make that save. We see a lot of goalkeepers that will go with their hands too early, and this ball goes through their hand into the top of the net. And that's exactly what we were talking about. So that's where that range, that that extension and that energy through your body helps make this save. And that all comes from your set position, your body weight um, and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm even looking right here, Bella, and like, you know, we we're talking about tracking the ball and then not making the action until the final moment. That's right. I have How many, to. I mean, I, yeah. I have to wait because. I'm not trying to just let the ball hit my hand. I'm trying to move the ball. Exactly. That's I'm, exactly. I'm not just thinking like I, I, I think a lot with tipping, a lot of goalkeepers struggle because they, they walk out too early and it hits their hand yep. and it'll go into the, it'll go into the crossbar. It'll go into the net or it'll rebound. Um, you can't just act as a wall. You, you're trying to exert your own momentum into this ball to redirect it. And I think maybe conceptualizing it as a redirection helps. Yeah. And this is a perfect, perfect yeah. example. See, and now, the movement of this ball, first of all, and that's a nasty ball, in my opinion. Yeah, that it is, starts to dip. Yeah. Well, it did. And I, I think some, the spin is what made it challenging because I think this is normally just a tip, but because it started to bend at the last second, I had to get a little salmon upstream. Do you know what I mean? And just get a little bit more push out of it. I it think that this outside I, the frame of my body. I think that this is where some people that don't understand would be like, why, why? Does Bella have to leave the ground? She's, you know, six feet and stuff. She could just, and that's not true. Like, that's exactly what we're saying is being there, locking out, le like being a wall, the ball will blow through you. That ball will hit the top of the net inside the goal and everything. So using that energy, it's, it's a great save. It's perfect. What we're talking I think about. Just, yeah. Shooting my hand, the energy and like me shooting my hand as hard as I can versus my whole body behind my hand is <laughs> what gives me the ability to push it over instead of, just your accidentally yeah. redirecting this in a net because of the spin. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this here too. And I think, you know, also, you know, before we move on right here, Bella, I think a lot of young goalkeepers need to recognize that you have to be able to improvise within the scenario because every play isn't going to be like 
what you think it's going to be. Like you said, that ball starts moving as you are going up for contact. And so you had to get that, that physicality of that twist of the hips, you know, in order to, to redirect that ball right there. Yeah. I think it's just a brilliant save. I, I'm, how many kids hit that into the net just over and over and over again? Mm-hmm. By kids, I mean me. How many of me hits that ball into the net? So, I think also, uh, like we talked, like positioning, you don't, like I see goalkeepers sometimes, they get set for this and they're almost in the net mm-hmm. and you're going to push it against the bar. You don't want to, like, you obviously don't want to be, I feel like I'm really happy with my position here. You don't want to be too far off your line so that it gets past you, but you can't be in your net where you're pushing it into the bottom of the bar as well. And I also think one of the best things is that you are set right on, like, your timing for your set, you're not stagnant. So you're not set too early. You're not flat footed. You're not setting too late. So you're still moving when Ashley's already hit it and stuff. You're, you're set and ready to explode. Locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. And I think, you know, last thing I want to say right here too, Bella, what you said was just absolutely perfect about, you know, the heels on the heels on the line. A lot of kids are, you know, on the heels are on the line. I always tell young goalkeepers, I said, your whole goal is to protect the space in front of the goal. Not your, your goal is not to pr- be inside the goal and protect the goal. So if you're inside the goal, all you're doing is already you're in the space where the, the goal is trying to be, you know, the ball is trying to be scored into um, just that little thing. Boom. Um, all right, <laughs> let's move on to this right here. I think, look at this, look at this. Congratulations from everybody. Oh, here's the play. Here's the play that we were talking about early, earlier on. Uh, a lot happens here. Uh, obviously, this uh, I think what happens is this ball is from outside of the box at an angle across. Ashley Hatch to Trinity Rodman into space. You come out, hold. I think that's a great save. And then, then there, here's the recovery. And then that touch covers that space right there. We'll, we'll start it from the very beginning. Bell, I see that you're already criticizing yourself right here. Uh, in my, in my opinion, this was pretty darn solid, but let's, uh, let's, let's start from here. So what's going on here first up? Um, I think this is something I try to teach my kids is like, what is the picture in front? So this ball is nowhere near me, but I can already see Trinity Rodman is breaking and is probably going to, is asking for a split pass. And I have one defender covering the space between. So I have, I'm already thinking that if Ashley Hatch passes this, I have to be able to close the space to cut off the angle, if she takes a touch, like I have to be set because she hits it first time, but if she takes that touch, I then have to close space. So that's what I'm reading right now is, is she going to hit this first time? Right. And so if she can, I, I want to be set for this. Hey, but, it's just um, me and you. I think we lost Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's true. And I think you find a lot of, a lot of times with, um, Mike will come back, but I think with that, you'll find kids that are moving as that ball is getting slipped here, they're coming too soon. Right. And so if she does hit it the first time, they're still moving and it's passed right by them into, yeah. into the side netting. Right. So you're kind of like, all right, I'm in a good position right now. If, if Trinity hits that first time, I, I have it covered. If she takes a touch, then I can, in that time, I can steal another yard or two and then get set. But we'll, we'll find a lot of goalkeepers, right. Go ahead with the pass, Mike. Okay. Like right now we'll start moving. And if she hits it first time, they're moving when she hits it and it's blown by her. Yeah. So to have that patience and now take a new pre-stretch and set because she's taken the touch, close the angle. And then, you know, and the foot's it, that's what's closest right now. If you if you don't go with your foot and you try to get the hand there, that's a goal. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Completely. Uh, I, I apologize there, guys. I don't know what happened. It's okay. Uh, we, right we, were talking, we were talking about you. <laughs> I just, uh, I disappeared. I just figured that Suskia was just uh, enough's enough with uh, muting me. So I'm just going to kick Mike off the, <laughs> off the stream right now. Um, no, I, I love this. Now I, I want to talk about this part right here because this is where I think a lot of young goalkeepers think that it's over. They're like, well, I did my job. I'm done. And then they just no, stand no. there and wait for the play. So what's your thought right here after this split save right here? So as soon as I touch it, I, my head's up and I'm trying to assess what's next. And so my default here is that if I have time, I want to kill space behind me because I'm at risk for being chipped right now. As it starts to pop out, though, I'm also being screened by my own defender, I think. I think. It's screening me a little bit. And so ball hasn't been hit, so I'm still trying to cover my space in behind. 
but when she hits it, I can't see it. So at this point, I'm like, I, your guess is as good as mine. I do get caught moving a little bit there because I can't see that she's hit it. Um, but I think I'm in an okay position. This is like going bottom left and I'm just trying to get, get there as it's dipping. So it doesn't bounce <laughs> over my hand. And then I take a nap. Did she? <laughs> it, it almost looks like whether she mishit it or what, that she was trying to go over you. Am I wrong? Because she open foots this. Yeah. Uh, she open foots that. And so by you trying to recover with that space behind you, like some people wouldn't have done that. They would have gone from the initial stave and they would have gone more of a, a lateral recovery line and left too much space behind them. And then yes, been totally vulnerable um, to be taken over top. So I think it's a good recovery. And I, and I think too, go ahead, Bill. Just striking that balance between how much I can fine tune my positioning during the play and when I need to just say, screw it, I have to get yeah. set. And that's like, ideally, I'm a little bit more dropped here, but the fact is the ball is coming and where I'm at is where it's where I'm at. And so I try to strike a balance of moving as much as I can, but then not moving by the time the ball is like being set so that I have the best chance. Yeah, yeah now, now I, I, think I, I think one thing that I do want to bring up right here, though, for, for a lot of, you know, people who are listening here or watching is the fact is that like, and Bella can attest to this, is that you're not always going to be in the perfect position. Mm -mm. You know, you're going to have to improvise and you're going to have to deal with being out of position or being obstructed view or whatever sort but of exactly, thing. But exactly what Bella said, you want it, regardless, you want to get set. So it's better to be set and out of position than it is to be moving. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that one up. That's Tony DeGico. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that was drilled into my head forever. Better be set. So you can actually give yourself the opportunity to make a save. Also, how many young goalkeepers right there, Bella? They start scrambling towards the ball. That's what I just said. They would yeah, go and I think, Yeah, and I think that if that ball pops out really close to me, it's one thing to keep closing, but this goes so far past me. It's like I let the defenders try to affect it, um, which they do. She has to now chip it over sink. Yeah. Um, and if I'm if – I'm, getting dragged out, she's chipping it over me. Yep. And so it's that game reading of like, can I affect the ball? Nope. I'm going to get into the best position I can, which in this case is closer to my goal line. Yeah. Dropping back and creating that depth, I think is what makes this save right here. And, and again, I think this is another thing where a lot of young goalkeepers, they take things so literally and they say ball plays out, come out into the space, you know, but you recognize the scenario, what can happen? What are their options for the player there? And, and yeah. where what's, what's the safest move right there? I, I think it was a brilliant double save, in my opinion. This yeah. whole there, there you go. There you take the then I was like, I just, well, I need to just lay down for a second. I, I, you know, it's it's also what we talk about for people out there when we're like, how how fat? How are you reading the game? How quickly are you reading the game fast enough, or is or are you too slow with reading the game? And so this is a good example of like, it's, this isn't something that you had a lot of time. It's like split second. Okay. I'm going to take two steps back, get myself in the best position I can done. Like, and that that's reading the game and that, that is the next level. So well done. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So let's, uh, let's go on to this play right over here. So this is, I think this is against OL rain, right? This is against OL rain. I think it's uh, Sophia Huerta with a cutback. Boom. And then it's in towards the six, headed ball by Bethany Balser. See, this is the type of play, Bella, that I'm talking about where, like, a young goalkeeper comes out and they try to win this ball. But then my, you recognize the movement. Yeah, my philosophy is that especially if there's – it's a it's a split-second decision, right? Can I get there? Can I not? And if I can't, and especially if there's a defender, like, make this hard work for the forward. Like she has to try to score from the PK spot off of a header, make that hard for her. If I come and she leaps it over me. Um, yeah. So as soon as I realize that I'm not going to come for that, I drop. Yeah. And that's a great point. Like you're, you have to, again, read the game, assess the situation. How hard is it? Like the only way she's scoring on this header is if you're out of position. <laughs> right. Because right? there's not enough pace behind her or anything like that. She's already in the spot where the ball is landing. So she's not running into the spot where she has momentum behind it or anything. So you're make it hard for her. 
and don't make it easy. Don't be out of position so it loops over you. So again, well done. See, I'm yeah. not criti I'm not critical, Mike. I'm very you positive. No, opinion okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've had a few goals recently that deserve. Oh, I would be, but we're not putting those up. <laughs> so <laughs> By the way, I don't know, Bella, I don't know if you saw recently, but everybodysoccer.com uh, had you listed in, uh, in some of the top uh, top young prospects in uh, the women's national team pool. So, you know, oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, it's great timing, you know. Get in there before the world, next World Cup. What What's going on at Pacific Northwest? You, Fallon, it's just it's getting crazy up there. It's getting <laughs> crazy up there. Uh, all right, so, sorry, so I want to play this right here. So right here on the cutback, on the in-swinger here, what I'm talking about is this is a really tough ball for a lot of a lot of goalkeepers because I think when it hits Balser's head, I think personally I would have gone for the ball. I would what? have tried to come out. Why I think would so, you have yeah. gone for that cross? It's at the well 12. because I stick my arm up in the air. I'm not that great a goalkeeper. But, no, but uh, I'm just saying. But but listen listen to what Bella's saying. Look how many defenders you have there. Look. Yeah. Everybody's marked up. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Why in God's name would you come for? And it's not it's not a looping ball. Like, why would you come and try to the only thing you're going to do coming for this ball at the 12 is take out your own defender yourself. And possibly that ball is just going to go boop and bounce into the goal. Why? why? And you're five, eight, Mike. So I know. <laughs> Look, I need this information. We have a game. We have a game tonight. We have a game tonight. OK, and we need to win in order to make the playoffs in my men's league. So it's this, good that we're having this podcast right, right this now. This is the point, so but this is the this. thing where you have to be able to change your your decision at the time. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I was going to come, I'm not. Now I have to don't follow one mistake by the other mistake. Don't pull yourself out of position and that not get yourself back into position. So no, don't yeah. come, but then get yourself back into position, right? Cuz if you don't, then you've done you've done another mistake. And, and also, I mean, I think I, sometimes I find that these balls, Bella, and I don't know how you feel, but sometimes these balls that don't have the pace on them, but have this really a lot of air oh, underneath yeah. the ball yeah. and they're high looping are more difficult than more of a driven, more driven ball in the scenario. Sure. I think that you have to, this one, especially I'm doing the math of like, is this going to land on top of the post? Is this going out of bounds? Is this going to dip before the mm -hmm. post? And yeah, I think it's just a because I'm in a position, I can just do a quick hip swivel and then just time it. Yeah, but then you, and then you find, my hand out. you find, you find with those looping balls, if you don't time your, your load and your explosion, right, you see people that hit it into the bottom of the bar, don't get a full tip on it with power, it hits off the crossbar, bounces right back out or hits the ball into the net. So, you know, with those slow looping ones, load and, and explode through. It's timing. This is a common youth goalkeeper club soccer goal, goal. that I see. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot yeah. of the a lot of the times. Yeah. yeah. You know? And then everyone's got an excuse. Well, you know, we need a taller goalkeeper or <laughs> you know, faster goalkeeper or we need a new goalkeeper. Or we or need whatever. a new goalkeeper. <laughs> Parents are brutal. Parents are the worst. <laughs> they yeah. are. Trust me, they are. Some coaches are too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. Well, uh, Bell, we don't want to keep you too long because I know obviously you got a lot going on. You got the, the Angel City game coming up. Uh, so thanks for taking the uh, <laughs> the time during that. Um, I do want to. I do want to talk about this a little bit before we kind of get uh, done with this. Here is it. Are there any specific activities that you recommend young goalkeepers? You know, either perform on their own to work on extending their reach? Uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of any that I have on my own. Um, I mean, I try to think about, we were talking about locking out too early and there's kind of this disconnection from the rest of your body. Um, I think anytime that you're trying to hold the ball or try to figure out your reach kind of within that fringe, I'm thinking of, um, you can volley a ball at a wall, volley or throw a ball at a wall, not so that it's coming right back at you, but so that it's you're hitting it at an angle so that it's going to kind of come in these fringe zones and trying to get two hands there with a step so that you're keeping your whole chest behind it. Um, that's like very like low level if you're having a kid that just is sticking hands out and not moving. There's no coordination with the rest of the body. I think getting your the rest of it all coordinated and connected is huge um, because if you take your step with it, as that becomes, that's the next step. 
the step after that is that mm -hmm. if it's farther than that, you now have the step you can leave the ground. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like it builds up. But there's a lot. I mean, here there's a big one that we did to kind of test that patient and, and, and figure out your range is starting with your head down and your goalkeeper coach cues you to pick your head up and it can come high into your face mm -hmm. or low in your feet and it's driven. It's as, it's come, as you pick your head up, the ball's coming and you have to make the decision to go hands or to turn your hands over and scoop it. And I remember struggling with this and every time it went low, I would kick save. Um, and so that really helped me with getting that connection of like where my range is when I need to kick save versus when I can turn my hands over that builds up into high, low, left right. or right dive. So you can start building up what's included with, I pick my head up, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and you start learning, like, you start building those connections faster. So like most stuff's in your range, but if the connections are slow, that helps build the connections to be faster. Yeah, don't do that in the game though, guys. I'm gonna see Bella play tomorrow and she's like, <laughs> hey, look, her head's down. <laughs> and she just made a great save. Sometimes I've thought about doing that for PKs because oh. we do we yeah. do like so much. I start on the goal line with my head down. Nadine's on the PK spot and she's ripping a half volley left or right. And I pick my head up and I can just pop out of the middle. And I had the PK to comes and I'm like, why can't I get these? <laughs> Yeah, I had to. Um, I did that at, when I was at UCLA. I did that with Lauren because Lauren was thinking too much in a sense. And, and you know, I'm a firm believer that like I, I think timing and reaction um, on a PK because you're forcing them to hit a perfect PK, um, especially at a certain level. I know Franz Hook agrees with me on that, too. Um, so I had her actually with her back to me. <laughs> like and I was just like, turn shot, get set like from the PK. Yeah. Spot. Just like get used to like reading me really quickly and reacting like you do when we sit here and I'm just shooting on you. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Your brain only takes the last picture. And I think that kids get caught up in reading, like they're taking cues that don't matter, like exactly. parts of the run up or what they're up or about. Like yeah. your brain is only paying attention to the last snapshot. Yeah. My, my favorite you... one that I get with like young goalkeepers as they go like, well, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. See what? Yeah. On a penalty kick? No, not a penalty kick. I'm just so you're talking about yeah. okay. so like with the Ashley yeah. with Ashley Sanchez one, I'm telling you I couldn't see it. We train a lot with our starting with our head down, picking our head up, the ball's already moving, or mannequins, people in the way. Because how often do we look up and our freaking defenders are in our way? A lot. Yeah. At least for me. And so being able to be balanced and not get caught going left or right. And that's that's part of that same thing. Like get yourself set in the right position and, and it's a split second, you know, if you're loaded and ready to go and your set timings, right. You're, you're going to get there. So, you know, and, and I think that's another thing too, is that I think, you know, as, as you keep progressing in the levels as a young goalkeeper, the game gets faster and the more and more likely you are to have less time of actually having view of the ball and getting into position and those sorts mm -hmm. of things. And, you know, you have to keep improving that as you get older Otherwise, you're going to always be behind the play, always be behind the play. Like maybe the reason that you're always you can't see the ball is because you're a step behind every single time. So, you know, I'm just thinking out loud here. Also, right take into account context clues when you can't see the ball. Like, where's your defender? Where's the ball coming yeah. from? Like, where is it? You can't gamble and go early. But like sometimes the picture, the picture in front of you will give you some clues. Yeah. Like, like is my far post covered by my defender? Exactly. One of my defenders, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Are you really? Are you saying that sincerely? I am saying that sincerely. I, 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 seriously. I always want to see goalkeepers excel, and um, I uh, you better take it seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. Trying oh to get back to shut up. There, there we go. So, so Bella, uh, if anybody out there wants to connect with you, um, first up again, thanks for time. I'm really excited for tomorrow's game. You know, obviously. It's a big match for for everyone. Even though it's early in the season, I feel like these rivalries are really starting to uh, to, mm -hmm. to ramp up right here. And this West Coast rivalry is going to be big time for for a while. Um, where's the best place for people to connect with you? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Bella Bixby. Um, both those platforms are great. Right on. And obviously, Saskia Weber. You can reach out to Saskia Weber at Saskia Weber on the union sports uh platform you see how i did that right there so i put the plug in 
uh, for the Union Sports right there. Check out the free there Union Soccer community on all platforms. There's the link tree right there or unionsports.com on desktop. It is a free community for all soccer players out there. We got a lot of fun stuff going on right there. You definitely got to check it out. And you can also reach out to Saskia Weber on traditional social media platforms as well at Saskia underscore Weber. If you want to reach out to us, contact at inside the 18 media.com or at goalkeeper podcast on all socials. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, shout out to those who had recommended that we reach out to Bella Bigsby. Uh, we thought you were too big time to come back on the show, Bella. I, I didn't oh know. You know been, I love been a talking couple, goalkeeper. <laughs> love it. It, it's been love a couple of Honestly, to be honest with you, we're, we're really proud of everything. You know, obviously there's been a lot that's happened, uh, you know, on the field and off the field. Um, so just, you know, congratulations on, on, on all the accomplishments that you're making out there. And also for you making a, a difference in the world too, because I think that's really important Thanks. for a lot of young, young, uh, young kids to, uh, to see out there. Um, all right, guys, with that being said, I know Siski has got a meeting to get to. So that is all the time on inside the 18. <laughs> Why? And we are <laughs> always throwing you under the bus. I know. Is this Just a normal go. Dynamic? Just go. <laughs> okay, maybe I didn't. I guess I didn't have to give that information out. <laughs> Fine, we'll do that again. I'll edit that. I'll edit that out in the audio. How about that? There you go. <laughs> all right, guys. That's all the time on Inside the 18, and we are out. Later, guys. Yeah.